WikiLeaks. The numbers are staggering. 25 document dumps so far, encompassing some 42,000 emails. Yet that is just one fifteenth the number of emails reportedly found on Anthony Weiner's laptop that the federal task force is combing through. You just heard about that. That does not mean the WikiLeaks emails are not revealing quite a lot about what was happening behind the scenes inside the Clinton campaign and potentially doing damage to the Clinton brand and Hillary Clinton's campaign. Here's Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry. An explosive new email shows Bill Clinton lined up a cool $6 million for his foundation from Sheikh Mohammed of Ethiopia with a mere phone call. One aide writing it would be crazy to go all the way to Ethiopia for a conference, quote, unless Sheikh Mo has sent us a $6 million check. Longtime Clinton aide Bruce Lindsay replies, if the call is made, it will help us get the $6 million. I think he should call. The Clinton campaign now says if Hillary Clinton is elected, the foundation will ban foreign money. But another new email shows in 2015, she privately wanted the flow of foreign money to continue, as long as there's more disclosure. Bill Clinton also wanted more foreign donations if they're submitted to, quote, an independent body for review. The obvious challenge with this is that there is no independent body to make that review. And a newly leaked email from March 2nd, 2015, the night the New York Times revealed Clinton used a private email account as Secretary of State shows, campaign chairman John Podesta wrote show Mills, not to sound like Lanny, but we are going to have to dump all those emails, so better to do so sooner than later. A reference to damage control expert Lanny Davis, known for urging the Clintons to err on the side of transparency. Except the timeline created by these WikiLeaks disclosures show a far different approach of holding back information starting with the candidate. When the Times story first crossed on March 2nd, Podesta asked campaign manager Robbie Mook if he had any idea of the depth of it. Mook replied, nope. On March 4th, Republican Trey Gowdy, chair of the Benghazi committee, subpoenaed Clinton's emails. That same day, citing executive privilege, Podesta wrote Mills, think we should hold emails to and from the president? March 7th, President Obama said he learned about Clinton's email system from news reports. Mills writes, we need to clean this up. He has emails from her. They do not say state.gov. That same day, Philippe Reines writes, there is just no good answer for the server. The FBI later revealed somewhere between March 25th and the 31st, BleachBit was used to delete Clinton's archive. Though she maintained on March 10th, the State Department already had official emails. To err on the side of providing anything uh, that could be possibly uh, viewed as work-related. Now, we've obtained talking points for Bill Clinton's $6 million phone call, which noted he went to the Sheikh's private suite at a nightclub in Ethiopia and played the saxophone. But aides warned of the Sheikh, who committed to giving up to $20 million, felt some of this was coercion. Brett, that's from an aide to Clinton saying he felt like it was coercion. Amazing. Ed, thanks. Good to see you.